Coming up on a bonus Locked on Lakers mini podcast, the Lakers and Jared Vanderbilt have reportedly agreed to an extension. What are some immediate thoughts? That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. For making Locked On Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts, Monday through Friday, always free, never behind a paywall. Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you can go to watch the show, hang out with nearly 21,000 subscribers. That count keeps growing. Hugely, hugely appreciate the everydayers who are clearly spreading the word. Much appreciated. It's just me, Andy Kamenetsky, today, my brother Brian. He's tied up at the moment, but we both thought that it was worth getting some thoughts out to the viewers, to the listeners as quick as possible. According to multiple reports, the Lakers and Jared Vanderbilt have agreed to terms on a four-year, $48 million extension, fully guaranteed. The fourth year is a player option. Jared Vanderbilt is now potentially under contract with the Lakers through the 27-28 season, 2027 through 2028. It's the same timeline, by the way, as Anthony Davis, and Austin Reeves, both of those guys, the final years of their extension comes up for 27-28. So Vanderbilt now has the longest potential commitment from the Lakers, the longest tied with Austin Reeves and Anthony Davis. But it's it's interesting to see him part of that long-term commitment in that mix. few immediate reactions. We're going to get into more of this from Monday's show, I'm sure, when Brian's back. But just wanted to give you some of the thoughts that popped into mind when I saw this news. Um First of all, it is the money is on the high side of what I thought would be doable for the Lakers in previous shows where we talked about a potential extension for Vando, which I was very much in favor of conceptually. I, I had wanted to see this get done if possible. I talked about it at maybe like a nine-ish million dollar mark, give or take, basically doubling Jared Vanderbilt's current salary for this season, four and a half million. Thought that would be a payday that could potentially make him happy, something that would be reasonable for the Lakers. Turns out it's closer to tripling that. And it is more or less a taxpayer mid-level exception, that type of money for Jared Vanderbilt. Um, good for him. It's not my money. And you know I wanted them to extend Vanderbilt in the first place. So I'm happy that they were able to get this done. I also don't think it's egregiously high. It Again, it's higher than I thought it would be. But it's not insane money. We're not talking about 16, 17, 18 million dollars for a role player with some upside. And you know, we can get into some of the things he brings to the table, but he's definitely a role player, very unlikely to become a superstar or even super high-end role player. Um, but given where salaries are headed, I don't think it's outrageous money for a solid rotation player, even if again. More money than I expected. I'd also forgotten, to be honest, that Jared Vanderbilt is a clutch client. And it makes a difference, as we've seen many times, not just with the Lakers, but across the league. And so it's clear, not misinterpreted, this is not a shot at Rich Paul. If anything, it is a compliment because he's supposed to get his clients paid. And if, to be honest, the money is more than the Lakers are truly comfortable with, but they were afraid of alienating Rich Paul on some deal point, to be honest, that is a Lakers problem. That is not a Rich Paul problem. I, I don't think it's actually the case uh, for reasons we'll get into in just a minute. Like, I doubt the Lakers are really uncomfortable with that money to begin with. But either way, good on the Lakers for getting this done, good for Clutch for getting this done. And it's yet another example of the budding relationship between the agency and in particular the Lakers a reason I don't think the Lakers are uncomfortable with this beyond potentially what Vanderbilt brings to the table, presumably liking it, is it gives them another reasonably priced deal that could become tradable if needed, and it gives them increased optionality. For example, Giannis Antetokounmpo, for the second time in a few weeks, has talked openly and kind of, I think, unprompted um, about what could possibly lead him to leave the box? What could prompt some dissatisfaction, make him decide this is not the place for him to finish out his career? 
It wouldn't become a thing until next offseason when Giannis truly has to make up his mind about signing an extension. But if he doesn't sign one this coming offseason, he's essentially in a walk year, and the Bucs would need, need to move him. They just have to. You can't lose a guy like him for nothing. It would be disastrous. Whether you're talking about Giannis or another potential superstar, for the Lakers, it just gives them increased optionality. And, you know, options are the lifeblood of a, you know, a front office. So, you know, it, Vanderbilt locked up to this money that, again, I think is reasonable, is not anything that would become incredibly burdensome for another team. That's, that's good for the Lakers in terms of thinking about their overall possibilities and pictures. I'd also like to think that this is a sign that the Lakers agree with me that Vanderbilt should have a defined role on this team. I am into the possibility, if nothing else, of Vanderbilt starting, even if it's just like a 15, 18-minute role because of the defensive versatility that he can bring to the team to open games, to open halves, that sort of thing. And it's interesting because Christian Wood, when when the Lakers signed him, that could have potentially squeezed Jared Vanderbilt's playing time. We We talked about that on a show like a week or so ago because it's already a very – crowded front court and the Lakers two best players LeBron and Anthony Davis are both members of that front court so like Jared Vanderbilt still could find his time squeezed depending on how the season lays out but if nothing else this contract suggests that the Lakers like what he brings to the table you know they like his potential to improve some of his weaknesses or if nothing else truly strengthen the things that he does really well and make them really valuable one advantage Vanderbilt has among the front court players is he's really the only one that can be used defensively like he's a member of the backcourt and like that he essentially operates like a defensive guard like Anthony Davis can do that but it's not it's not practical to ask him to do that whether you're talking about how taxing it is in terms of his overall offensive burden but also too I think the effects of using Anthony Davis as essentially defensive guard would really screw up pretty much any defensive scheme that the Lakers were looking to implement, like if that became his primary thing. So that is an advantage that Vanderbilt has among all the front court players defensively. And I, th- I think that's something that the Lakers, at least I'd hope, are really valuing and thinking about him with his role. In any event, the Lakers have Vanderbilt locked up. And again, I'm happy about that. I think it's good news for the Lakers. It's a good sign that as a front office, as an ownership group, as you know, an ethos with Rob Palinka, Jeannie Buss down the line, they're thinking about roster building in terms that is bigger than just superstars. Superstars do matter, obviously, but at the same time, to quote Lester Freeman from The Wire, all the pieces matter. And Vanderbilt is a nice piece. And I'm glad that he is part of the future for the Lakers moving forward. Uh, Again, we're going to get into a lot more of this for Monday when Brian's back, but wanted to give you guys some thoughts to chew on over the weekend. Thanks again to everybody for listening and for watching. But before we go, wanted to let everyone know Locked on Lakers is brought to you by FanDuel, the NFL season. It is underway with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers, just bet $5, five bucks, and you can get 200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. And you can use those bonus bets on spreads, on player props, over unders, and a whole lot more. Plus, all new customers who bet, again, just five bucks, you get a hundred dollars off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Incredible deal. And again, this is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is really easy to use, great user experience, super friendly, all those different betting options at your fingertips. So visit fanduel.com slash Locked on kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Also wanted to let you all know that Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Jace. And if the past few years with the pandemic, various natural disasters, other unforeseen emergencies have taught us anything, it's that we should expect the unexpected. Everyone should feel empowered to care for themselves, for their loved ones, when they feel like the world has gone sideways. And that's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical, make sure you have that medication 
in hand. It's simple. Jace Medical handles everything from the online evaluation. I've done it. It's super easy to licensed pharmacy medication delivery, ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than 360 bucks by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical Plus. Additional 20 bucks off by using the code Locked on at the checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Promo code locked on. Again, appreciate everybody joining us, and we will see you on Monday.